Okay, so let's make that smaller. Okay, great. So hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Marcel Huber. I'm a CEO and one of the founders of Syncraft. And what is our idea is to put the reverse idea before the common forward idea. This is, this is more and more shaping our understanding about the future that we have to understand that bigger, better, faster might be at its peak. And uh, we are there to provide solutions beyond uh, without, uh, um, yeah, uh, total decline of everything, but still keeping this negative emission upwards. And so um, I just introduce you roughly to, to, uh, to the agenda, something you have to allow me to tell about our company. Then we have this topic reversing climate change through biochar. I will, I will share what is our understanding on reversing climate change and that it is possible. Um, then we talk about our power plants. Um, they also include an engine. Um, about our technology, about our fuel, which is forest residues, uh, and about the biochar which is uh, biochar is not biochar. Um, we have a sp special one, an awesome one, but uh, it is, it is uh, not for all, perfect, uh, all uh, usages the perfect one. I think this is quite something getting mature. And then our, our big call, uh, let's work together. There is no competition. There is just a big, big, big task to be done. Uh, um, yeah, we are still an SME based in Austria, right between the mountains um, and um, 50 employees. And, and we pursue this mutual goal of reversing climate change. And this is our, this is our main tool. Uh, the main tool is something that generates heat and power as we have maybe heard before. Um, and this awesome byproduct biochar. Um, so all three products are done by intention in our systems. So there is no, you can't say, I don't want a heat. I don't want a biochar. You may can say you don't want a power, but 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 this is our core product. So uh, maybe then you have other technologies right and available. Yeah, and our, our mission is to be understood as a part of a big puzzle. Huh? So there is not a single approach that will uh, get us out of this. Uh, it's something put together in the right order. And uh, we combine this idea of carbon dioxide removal and bioenergy and um, carbon dioxide removal in its best form as we understand it and best is meant by concentration and meant by efficiency is BCR, which means biochar carbon removal. What about this issue reversing climate change? Uh, I mean, sounds quite ridiculous and, and undoable if we look at current figures, but in truth, it, it could be quite simple. Um, this is the problem. This is the problem you see here. And this shows the, 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 the curve of the increased CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. And what you see is this up and downward uh, uh, development of this curve. And what you see inside is that on the northern hemisphere during summer, biomass, and it's only biomass because there's more ocean in the south, in the, the land-based biomass during summer takes up more CO2 from the atmosphere than we still emit. Yeah? Of course, there might be some difference in warming buildings in, 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 uh, in winter time, but the majority is gone to transportation and industry, which doesn't care about uh, outside ambient temperatures. So in fact, nature is doing this reverse mode every summer on the Northern Hemisphere today. And the only thing is it decays in winter. So if we prevent decaying things, um, we can do the reverse mode by, by on the shoulders of nature. 
and there's a simple there's a simple approach to to stop decaying biomass it's to carbonize it because that is done by nature for billions of years so this is nature forms out of biomass carbon over over ages yeah? and the only thing what we do is we do the turbo on that yeah? so we produce permanent stable carbon beside the renewable energy production and so if we do that consequently and at scale today um, we could reverse um, climate change for sure but the thing is what prevents us is we do it not at the speed we need it and uh, of course we need all other pieces like direct air capture or bioenergy and carbon capture as well so there's not only a single task for that as well but but biochar could be the main pillar of reversing climate change. I've heard this already today, so I will I will just uh, jump through. So if you have this idea of burning or decaying biomass, you have this 100% CO2 again released in the atmosphere. So this is called climate neutral cycle. If you put a climate positive cycle on it, you you put it in a plant and you can capture up to 30% in our case, in, in some pyrolytic only cases, as we have heard, you can increase that maybe up to 40, 45%. Um, but only 70% is still released to the atmosphere. So if you do that constantly, that is a 30% more than the natural path is. And if you base it on forest residues, there is no tree cut for that purpose. So you just take these amounts of biomass you don't use for furniture, blackboards, sawmill industry, and whatever. This is what we, we call a significant share of CO2 captured with any cycle of usage. So what we what we actually do, I, I, I due to the time, I just over jump over to this to this video but uh, if you want uh, we we have it on a on a homepage that, that describes our process in detail this is what you see here is a 4 megawatt plant for megawatt electric we, we built in in switzerland i will uh, show you that uh, afterwards so the the thing is that we highly innovative we have this decentralized approach which is crucial as we have also heard um in logistics um it's climate positive with a awesome efficiency so the total efficiency from fuel on the wet basis uh, is uh 30 percent to the generator so the the combustion engines are running at 40 percent internal uh, efficiency um, we have a heat to power ratio of only one by four so one megawatt of electricity provides only 1.4 megawatts of thermal we have no residues we have no dust emissions um, you don't need anything to run the process instead of biomass, of course. This is our product range. So our main focus is at the moment at the megawatt level. So uh, big or even bigger is uh, even more beautiful day by day because we have to fulfill demands of industry today. And these are quite bigger than, than uh, these decent, uh, these normal things. I show you now some, some references. This is some top-notch plant we have built in Austria. It's a one megawatt plant. You've also seen it on the front page. Um, one megawatt plant. Um, it, this is what we have seen before in the, in the video animation. Um, this is a four megawatt plant we built in Switzerland. And today, this is the biggest carbon dioxide removal plant on a commercial basis up and running. So that that's even far bigger than the Orca plant from the, uh, from Climeworks. But as it is only on biochar, it's totally underestimated um, or not seen uh, accordingly, but I'm sure that will change soon. We have also built a plant in Japan. Um, um, we have a plant in Italy and there are many, many more. I just want to give you some, some ideas of size and uh, locations of these plants. What is the underlying imaging in our system? How does the process work? Um, first of all, we 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 have a staged um, 
thermochemical conversion process, which is unique on our own system. We have a pyrolysis first that turns the, the biomass into biocarbon. And then in the second step, we eliminate all these uh, long chain carbon or carbon hydrogens. We just burn them, honestly. We turn them into CO2 and water vapor. And then we recombine clean carbon together with CO2 to, and H2O uh, in, in form of steam into a, a syngas, in a very clean syngas that ends in a clean carbon and in a clean gas suitable for high-end gas engines. So in our case, this, this, uh, this is the tar elimination, so to speak. We, we here burn, like in all incineration plants, all these impurities from pyrolysis step so that we don't end up with something like a wood vinegar um, or tar. So this is eliminated. And um, we end up with a clean flame right after the filter, so without any gas treatment, which is quite crucial to run these engines, what we do. Further, there's a high grade on fuel flexibility. It's always about cheap fuel. Cheap fuel is a residue. Uh, cheap fuel on the wood base uh, also contains bark and fines and whatever. So we have a setup of a system developed that can cope with these kinds of fuels that only operates at 850 degrees, which uh, does not melt the ash content in the biomass, which is quite crucial. Yeah? What we can't run on is um, on any kind of agricultural residues. So as soon as there is some virtualizer applied to the fuel, you have this potassium inside and uh, potassium rich fuels are a no go for our setup. Yeah, that's the system. What you see here is a picture of, of this floating fixed bed. So whenever you think what we do is based on the fluidized bed, it is not. It is a floating fixed bed, and this makes us unique, and this gives us the advantages and um, USPs we have. We come with an industrial design. Um, we, come, we come with these engines um, that uh, you see two top brands I would call worldwide on, uh, on syngas engines. That's uh, on the left side, it's 2G. They would come with the 400 kilowatt plants. And on the right side, that's also Tyrolean company, um, uh, Jembacher, which is quite famous for, for uh, high-end gas engines. Yeah, what, what's the fuel about? Um, as you see, we, we, we talk about these residue issues. I give you some key issues. As I said, agricultural residues are not suitable. We are very tolerant uh, towards scones and nails. I, someone has turned off his microphone and is not talking. Hello? Yeah, yeah, it, it's muted now. We can continue. Okay, thanks. Um, we are very tolerant to stones and nails uh, because of our system, um, and we can operate on these this, this residues. Then we have this, this high-quality raw material. I, by intention, call it raw material and not product because um, the biochar has many, many, many options to go to. You see here three totally different applications. We have this feature grade biochar, so we get the feature grade of EBC, for example, for the European uh, uh, biochar certificate. Um, you can also do soil amendments. And what is quite interesting in, from our perspective and um, um, is to go to climate negative, uh, climate positive or CO2 negative, uh, CO2 negative, yeah, sorry. Um, Concrete. Yeah? So if you put that in industrial context, um, it, it's doing awesome things. Um, and there is uh, also a great company he's, he's, he's doing a lot of uh, investigations and we're building a lot of things uh, already in the real world based, which is a company called Castocon. You can find this company on one of the next slides as well. 
what is the biochar like? So I said biochar is not biochar. In our case, it's certifiable. We have very high carbon content, but it's dusty. So it's not chunk-wise. We have a fine dust particles. Um, it's totally free of impurities. So there are no stones and nails from the original biomass in uh, by nature of our process. And it's inertinite. And I have a separate uh, slide for that uh, at the end. Yeah. Um, why it is so valuable in terms of fighting climate change? Um, Kathleen Draper from the IBI in, in the US calls it shoffable. Yeah? It is touchable, shoffable CO2 in its highest durable concentration. And that's why it's so easy um, to make out a carbon sink ecosystem on it, a trustful, a understandable, a touchable. So in our case, when the plants produce the biochar, they create these certificates and the biochar, and they sell it to certain dealers. And um, they then sell it to farmers, to construction companies, and so on. And they, they sell carbon and the climate service, the negative emission, um, also do them. And they then can sell the certificate alone to carbon credit dealer, which go to the offsetters. And that ecosystem is today up and running already. So we have certification bodies, we have tracking bodies, which is carbon future. Um, we have top-notch uh, associations like the EBI, um, uh, which, which, which framed all this, this, uh, this work. Um, and um, yeah, we, we have these certificate dealers and of course the most valuable um, offsetters, dealers, those who buy these carbon credits on, a, on, a, um, on the market. My last slide uh, goes to inertinite. So it's always about the biochar and when we talk about carbon removal and saving the climate, we have to have a carbon storage that works, let's call it forever. I mean, this is quite long, but, but maybe this is the closest approach. And by means of geoscience, we today know that what we produce is the most stable form of atmospheric CO2 um, you can think of. Yeah? And, and this is high-grade biochar. And if you put it to something where it can't be burned anymore, it's stored and sequestered. And this is the key. Yeah? The only thing you don't have, you must not do with it, is to burn it. Because then, of course, the CO2 is released again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Finally, these are some numbers. So what we have built so far, um, electric power plant uptime availability, CO2 tons captured. It's still nothing um, against uh, the mutual target we have or task we have, but uh, what we call it, it's a beginning. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, looking forward to all kinds of questions. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Hugo. So thanks for an excellent presentation. Uh, is there any questions regarding this presentation? Yes. Are you willing to consider to change your engines? <laughs> we, 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 uh, I just sent you a LinkedIn uh, request. I think we have to talk about uh, these details, yeah? Of course, because uh, we have also investigated fuel cells and other thermo thermochemical machines that convert the gas into a more valuable product. And I think this is for sure uh, um, always open to this discussion to produce more, more power. Yeah. Thank you for the consideration. Um, I, I take it on me. I have to make it happen because uh, we, we know people are, are coming with like gas in us. They, they have lots of uh, engines going around. And we're going at the slow rate. Oh, for sure, for sure. Have you considered to use your biochar to make uh, nanograph in? I have some back coupling in in my my uh, micro uh, my head. 
May not speak up. Yes. Someone has turned on his microphone as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pasi Ambe, am, if you would mute yourself. Yeah, I am Ambe Pascal, the production uh, manager for Boucher. The new. Please, I I have a, a question. I want to ask, what is your position concerning the thermal uh, energy production for countries like uh, in Africa? Because we here have a lot of. Uh, energy issues and then most of the countries are looking forward to convert the, their biomass into energy sources what is your openness to partnership with countries like for example nigeria kenya cameroon and other countries please yeah richard we will come back to your question um i, I will try to answer this first the 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 thing is, um, for at the moment, our power plants are, I, I call it, it's not easy. Uh, it's, it's a complex machine. Um, also, the engines are top-notch engine. They need a certain infrastructure, just to be honest and frankly about this. Yeah? So actually, we're doing projects in, in industrialized countries. Yeah? And for us, it's a big challenge to, to do this plant ready for for the rest of the world uh, just as a, as a sme it has been a big challenge to do a project in japan as well uh? so um back back your pardon that that at the moment we we have limited possibilities we need we need a con considerable good partner for that but if we find that we are open to everything yeah um concerning the heat yeah we have to turn it into cold yeah into uh, uh, by uh, absorption uh, heat pump, um, we can turn easily the heat into cold to cool down buildings and so on. And I think this is one of the most interesting heat utilization for for maybe uh, more hot regions than in in on the northern hemisphere. Right? Um, maybe also for food processing and something like sawmill industry, they naturally all need. Uh, industrial heat to do their jobs. Um, so these are, of course, also very good integrated uh, heat customers here in, in 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 Europe. So I think, all in all, it's not that different. Yeah, but of course, uh, utilizing the heat is a bigger challenge in in warmer countries than 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 in the north. Yeah. Please, I still have last last question. Uh, the maximum capacity when yeah what in terms of capacity of energy production how what is the capacity we intend the lowest to be produced and the highest please what we do is between on on, on base of electricity we do between 400 and 4000 kilowatt okay i have a question related to that can you give a guideline for the capex involved in uh, doing 400 versus 4,000? And second part of the question, if you go to another country, do you have financing assistance available or everything has to come from the local partner? Um. What we have is, um, as a rule of thumb, you can assume our systems cost roughly 5,000 euro per kilowatt electric, uh, kilowatt electric installed. Yeah? That is a almost turnkey figure. But of course, you, you have to think about surrounding issues change all the time. Yeah? So this is a rough number. Uh, that works between 400 and 4,000. So in our case, the the economics of scale at the moment is not boosting or, or turning everything upside down. So the four megawatt plant um, is in the same digit than 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 uh, the the smallest one. Now that is our modular approach. Yeah? Um, if we go to new countries, we that are not in Europe or even uh, a bit remote, we we have to have a strong partner um, 
that does these projects together with us and we're not going for finance in in, in other countries and uh, this is not in our sphere of capacity at the moment uh, just to be honest i mean we are 50 people um you have to have partners but that is our intention huh? like we did in japan you have to find uh, proper partners um, that do the complementary works um, in some countries we are not allowed to install so we just can send supervision we can then send a set of lego pieces and uh, that our supervisors uh, will put together with the plant and we su successfully did that in japan as well but during covid by the way in japan uh, this was quite an issue, but um, yeah, almost everything you can do with an incredible team. Huh? So, yeah, I was mentioning this because uh, we have one German partner, they want to come here, and uh, uh, they say uh, up to 70% can be financed uh, with the European bank. But the remaining 30%, the local partner has to provide, which is quite a good deal. But uh, I was just wondering whether you have something similar in the pipeline. Yeah, in Germany, they 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 are very or quite, let's call it aggressive in terms of uh, the KfW has uh, some more instruments than we we have we have in Austria. Uh, um, but there are also possibilities, of course. Uh. So we also we also have these, but it depends on the country on the boundary conditions. I mean, uh, uh, foreign financing is something uh, which is not my key competence. Just to be okay. simple about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Hugo. Uh, I have one question for you. So, carbon credits. Uh, what are the total number of carbon credits uh, created till now from Syncraft? Is there any rough number? Now we have this on, on our last slide. We have this uh, 123,000 uh, uh, tons. All, all of, are sold? All, all of are sold? Or captured. Mean... No, no. Just to be honest, this is this is the captured amount. So what we do is, and, and you have to think about, th this is quite a big amount. This is not a... It's it's yeah. uh, on the other side. It's our, it's today. It's roughly fifty k, fifty k tons of biochar produced. That's the corresponding number of raw material. So, um, the I would say this has to grow mature. You can assume that half of this amount has been sold as a carbon credit, but the other thing is uh, is is used for different applications. Just to be clear, one of the applications is also we're doing barbecue briquettes on a very renewable, sustainable basis, which is one part. You've seen Alpenkohle CO2. They are doing this, this great job. So you find our biochar also in this form. We call it CCU because if you, if you can claim the CO2 into the cola bubble, uh, is also CCU. That means carbon capture and utilization. So making barbecue briquettes is the same. Yeah, but it's not carbon capture and storage. So consider yeah. half of our 120k um, sequestered. The other half is utilized. Yeah. Thank you. We have to go for a gigaton. Huh? This is yeah. the thing with the many yeah. zeros, uh, which is incredible. Huh? So, so is there any other questions? There are some questions in chat, uh, so I will ask you quickly so that if you can answer. Oh, same capacity of the nations. Are you looking for a dealer or representative to non-industrialized countries? Pardon? Are you looking for a dealer or representative uh, for non-industrialized countries? It 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 depends. I mean, it it's 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 not only a dealership; it's complex. Yeah. So it's it's uh, a lot of EPC. We need an EPC financing. All the things we are not capable for. So it's it's you have to build up service. But yes. Uh, 
we, we are not looking by really searching, but um, I think it's about networking and uh, things like that, yeah. But we are very open to everything. Yes. Eh? And another question is, uh, is there project, met, uh, your project methodologies approved under VCS, Voluntary Carbon Schemes, or do you have MRV validations for MRV validations? Verification methodologies, which methodologies you are following, maybe? Um, we are following the EBC SYNC standards, which is in, implied by uh, carbon standards. Um, but it also prolonged to, to Vera and Puro, so that there, there, there is no, um, I think the key is the tracking. Uh, the tracking, which is more or less done in all our cases by Carbon Future, it's about the transparency, where is the biochar produced, how it, is it uh, certified, um, and to whom it is sold. And all these steps, they have to be considered. Uh, so because it's all about trust, you buy a ton of CO2 and you trust that it is sequestered. And so transparency and... Uh, uh, this tracking is quite crucial uh, because if you produce a ton of biochar, you can't issue a credit because yeah. the next one buys it. And if it turns into barbecue, then then it's uh, bullshitting uh, or green. It's not even greenwashing. It's it's that's a big issue. So you have uh, to track actually, the production and the, and the storage. Sorry, Marcel. Great presentation, by the way. Uh, yeah, we do uh, do carbon credits from our biochar, and I also have worked with Pyrocal um, for them to generate carbon credits as well. That's another Australian company who do gasification. Um, yeah, so there is, yeah, biochar can be a carbon credit generator. Um, we've got, we've had Pure Earth and Vera come and look at our machine, these machines, um, and yeah, they're very excited. Uh, our emissions we've got under there, uh, strict regulated. Um, so it, it can be done. Uh, and that really sort of changes the game is not only can the person making the biochar earn money from the biochar itself, but uh, as long as it's, um, you have to certify that it's not being reburned. You're quite right. But uh, there are, certain stipulations, but if you can guarantee that it is going in the ground uh, to grow food and that sort of thing, which is what my customers all do, um, then you can actually generate carbon credits. We're doing it. I mean, in Europe, um, this regulation, which is called CRCF, that's climate uh, carbon removal and carbon financing that, 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 that will define on a legal body level um, the methodologies of carbon removal that will come out next year. And I think this will end these um, open market certification things. So because it will define things on a, on a, on a huge, gigantic level, and then everyone will be safe. Then a CO2 done is, is defined how... How, what do you have to do? And then we are yeah. on a more confident, solid ground with these carbon credits. Sir. And then they also yeah. can uh, be part of the ETS system, uh, of course. Sir. Sure. Yeah, no, we um, definitely have to guarantee and it's third party verified that as long as the biochar is weighed and tagged and as signed off that it is going into the ground. Uh, I've had to do that a couple of times uh, myself, um, but it's also being done. Uh, we're doing some work in Africa on that very ground at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing for the industry. It really helps the industry a lot. And as we know, it is very carbon negative. At, when it's done in a airtight pyrolysis system, you might have seen some of my pictures Every leaf is still there. It's unprocessed. So you see every vein in the leaf. Um, so it's the way to maximise the char 
which means you've got the most amount of carbon preserved. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a game changer. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for all the questions and presentations. So I think we can close the webinar today for now. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Great presentation. Yeah, thanks. Thanks all. Thanks everyone to join this webinar. Thank you. Have a nice day.